So now I am happy to introduce to you our presenter, Diane Hyman, MSN, RN, and OCS. Diane serves as the Transitional Care Manager at MD Anderson Cancer Center at Cooper in Camden, New Jersey. She works closely with the multidisciplinary team, overseeing the coordination of the care of complex cancer patients. Diane has over 20 years of experience as an oncology certified registered nurse and community educator. She has a passion for the underserved and works widely with the minority communities, educating and assisting with screenings for breast, cervical, prostate, colorectal, and lung cancer. In 2001, Diane noticed the disparities prevalent in minority breast cancer survivors. She was thus led, thus led to form a breast cancer support group for women of color and faith called Sister Will You Help Me? Through the years, the group has provided support, advocacy, and education for newly diagnosed and long-term survivors and served as a place of hope. Diane has been recognized by numerous professional organizations for her commitment to nursing excellence, volunteerism, and service. And now I'd like to present to you Diane. Welcome, Diane. Hi, Roxanne. Thank you. Thank you um, for your introduction and this opportunity to be a part of the survivorship program on this afternoon. Um, I, it's an honor and a blessing to just come today and just share with our survivors. I welcome you all for taking um, the time out this afternoon and just coming and, and joining us in this discussion today. And so faith, hope, and resilience, finding your inner strength in survivorship and beyond. I just wanted to start out with some survivorship statistics. The number of cancer survivors is increasing rapidly. It's projected that there's 16.9 million cancer survivors in the U.S. today, which is about 5% of our population. And this number is projected to increase by 29% over the next 10 years. Cancer survivors are living longer than ever before. About 67% have survived five plus years, 45% 10 or more years, and about 18% of our survivors uh, survived 20 plus years. And this is, you know, due to um, treatment and all the advancement in treatment and technology and more targeted therapy, and we've made great strides in treating uh, cancer. However, survivorship does come with its challenges. About 54% um, state that they deal with chronic pain. About half also feel that practical and emotional consequences of cancer can be more difficult than the medical issues. About 70% experience depression. Um, we have a fair amount that uh, loss of sexual desire or sexual dysfunction, about 58%. Portion of our patients also experience um, job and financial and that they feel trapped in the job to maintain insurance coverage. Debt that is incurred um, during treatment and then also again dealing with infertility. And so we have millions of survivors, over a million survivors, but survivorship does come with its challenges as well. We know that fighting cancer and coming through it can be draining both physically and emotionally. And the experience can be associated with positive and negative life challenges and changes. And I will say as I'm an oncology nurse again, working here for 20 plus years and facilitating the breast cancer support group, I've met so many, had the opportunity to be a part of so many um, individuals' journeys. And uh, throughout this presentation, I love using quotes um, from some of our survivors. And I remember this one patient told me that I walked through my diagnosis and treatment like a champ. And a year later, I felt like I was hit by a Mack truck. Emotionally and psychologically, I crashed. And this isn't uncommon. Oftentimes, patients will go through their treatment and everything that they're enduring almost on autopilot, on adrenaline, just, you know, focusing on what they need to do, to the next steps to get through, and may experience that, that crash after um, emotionally and psychologically after they've gone through everything. And so here we are talking about hope and faith and being resilient, and how do we move past that? How do you move past that, and how do we help you um, get, get to that place? And so when we talk about hope, we know that it's to, to desire 
with expectation of a, obtainment or fulfillment, the belief that the future will indeed be better than the present, and we expect it with confidence and um, with anticipation. And so um, being hopeful is, is very vital to, um, why, to why it's important. Why is hope important? It's important because research shows that it, it reduces feelings of helplessness, it increases one's happiness, it reduces stress, and really um, improves our quality of life. And it really just real influences our, our state of mind that, you know, when we're anticipating um, something um, of good, it, it alters our mood to a positive mood and um, for a future situation. And so having hope is important. Again, with faith, we know that faith is a strong belief in God or in the doctrines of a religion or a system of religious beliefs. Uh, of scripture, if I can use a scripture reference, Hebrews 11.1, 1, uh, says faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And so um, we can't uh, underestimate the power of one's belief in God, the power of one's uh, belief in a higher power um, as they're undergoing their cancer journey. Um, I remember this single mom of two small children. She said, I found myself becoming hopeless but had to rely on my faith in God as my source of strength to get me through. And so um, individuals' faith, you know, being hopeful, relying on your faith, um, really are two components to help us be resilient as we face obstacles in your, in your cancer journey, as you face um, moving forward in, in your survivorship. And so how do, you, how do you move forward? How do you become victorious and live victorious after um, – uh, your journey. And I just wanted to pose this question. Do you use the term survivor permanently? Is it a badge or title that you have or wear forever? Or is it just a part of your life? And um, this is very individual. There's no right or wrong um, answer to these questions. But um, in order to move forward, how are you, how are you identifying yourself as a survivor? How has the journey impacted your life in a such in such a way that um, you're carrying it out, using it um, to, you know, to advocate or, or to make a difference in the lives of others. Some survivors do that. They, they take the, the ownership of being a survivor and become champions um, for that particular cancer and, and give back and help in others and advocate and all of those things. And I've also seen some survivors that, you know, it can, it, it's a hindrance and, and have never really been able to move past, um, you know, that term survivor. Some patients don't even like the word survivor at all. And so, again, it's really, really an individual, um, uh, uh, individual. There's no right or wrong, but just how are you using that to, to move forward and to live victoriously? Um, I encourage you to identify what you've learned from the experience. What did you learn about yourself? What did you learn about your family? What did you learn about your support um, as you've gone through um, your cancer journey? It's all a learning experience. Um, something is being learned, um, and not just for yourself, but for others as well. And so identify those things. What did you learn from that experience about yourself, about your family, about your, your community and your support? Many people make positive life changes. The impact of that cancer journey um, leads to a positive life change in their relationships, um, you know, not taking things for granted, just really um, having a, a different perspective of life, of course, you know. And spiritually, people grow um, spiritually through the experience, their personal strengths, their life priorities. All of these, um, that cancer survivorship has a great impact, um, positively life-changing um, for survivors and hopefully for you. And so we encourage you to surround yourself in positive, um, positive attitude, positive people, positive surroundings, positive energy. What does that look like for you? And just um, remove the negative in your life. A negative mind will never give you a positive life. I found um, this uh, little saying that I, that I like. Um, and so changing your mindset, looking at the glass half full as opposed to half empty, um, the positive people that are, that are in your life, again, removing negative. And your surroundings, the, the, um, 
you know, music, your atmosphere, all of those things that bring positivity to your life, your pets, things of that nature. Um, so surround yourself in positive as you move forward in your journey. And again, it's not just for you to survive, but we want you to thrive. Um, come out of come out of this all thriving um, in in the next portion of your journey, the next portion of your life. And so it brings me to being resilient. What is resilience? Resilience is the ability to bounce back after a difficult experience. It's the capacity to cope with stress and adversity and to continue with your life despite your setbacks. We know that resilience is important because it allows us to adapt and to grow um, in the face of our challenges. Um, I found, I read this, that it said the analogy for resilience is that it's an individual's personal protective factor or PPF to navigate stressful circumstances. And I found this really interesting. Um, working in healthcare as a healthcare provider, we don what we say our PPE or our personal protective equipment. Um, we put that on um, to protect ourselves from harmful chemicals or viruses or chemotherapy or things of that nature. And we also put it on to protect um, the individual immunocompromised patient from us, from us giving them um, something. And so we don our PPE, our personal protective equipment, but um, resilience, what does that look like you donning your personal protective factor, your PPF, to help you navigate uh, stressful circumstances? And your PPF, it will guide you to make the necessary changes for self-preservation. We know that self-preservation is the first law of nature, right? And so, don your PPF. What does that look like for you to protect yourself, to help you navigate um, these stressful circumstances um, undergoing, your, you know, your cancer journey? And your personal protective factor, individual, your family, your community, what does that look like, engaging in behaviors that reduce the effects of, of your stressful life events? Um, and just living it out in a positive way, you know, connecting with others um, and for your mental health. Um, and just, again, the inspiration um, that you need to, to, for, to help you in your, to navigate your stressful situation. Here are some steps to help you develop resilience, um, the ability to confront your fears, um, undergoing cancer and moving forward in your journey is, you know, just hearing that word cancer. We all know that a um, great level of fear comes with that. And so how are you able to confront, confront your fears so that you can move past it and not be paralyzed in the fear? Um, we know some, I've experienced it and know of some patients that allow fear to to overcome them and paralyze them almost to the to the point of where they are not able to move forward with the next steps that they need to, to do them to, to continue. Um, maintaining an optimistic and a realistic outlook, again, positive mindset, and not to say that you won't have pessimistic moment or, um, you know, you won't get down or won't, you know, but we you don't want to, to stay there. And so um, you want to kind of maintain optimistic. And again, it goes back to the previous slide where I said surround yourself in the positive. Um, emulate resilient role models. Any of you have any resilient role models that you can look to and say, wow, um, they've been through X, Y, and Z and yet are still standing or yet, you know, still motivated and still thriving through it, you know. So, you know, you emulate resilient role models and looking for meaning and opportunity for growth even in um, the toughest situations, there's always opportunity for growth, even in that, and the meaning in it. Um, it's usually always a greater meaning as we undergo trials and, and tribulations, um, you know, in, in our lives. And so we want to look for meaning and opportunity for growth in those circumstances, emulate resilient role models, maintain that optimistic and that resilient, that realistic outlook, and confront your fears. Don't allow our fears to paralyze us from moving forward. Take the necessary steps um, uh, in that in that venue. Relying on your moral inner compass, you know, turning to religious or other spiritual practices um, helps us develop your re re resilience. You know, meditation and you know whatever that looks like for you. That that builds you up and it helps you develop resilience. 
Um, we have to accept the things that we cannot change, that old um, prayer of serenity, you know, to help me um, accept the things I can't change but have the wisdom, you know, to know the difference. And so um, we want to be able to do that. And taking care of your personal health and your well-being is extremely important. Um, we have to take ownership of our own personal health and our well-being. We can't um, rely on someone else to say, you know, it's to you for you, totally for another individual to be responsible for our well-being. And so you got to take ownership of your personal health and your well-being and the necessary steps that are required for you to move forward and actively solving our problems. I know at somewhere throughout the course of, you know, life and in our in your cancer journey and just you know, just speaking in life in general, we would love to just pull the blanket up over our heads and, you know, not have to face anything today. But um uh we have to actively look to solve our problems and be active in, in the things that are taking place in our life. Um I love utilizing humor. Humor is the best medicine. Um, laughter is good for the soul. We've heard that. We've experienced that. And so, you know, utilize humor as you're going through. Find some things um, to laugh about. Uh, I'm sure some uh, patients have a lot of different funny stories. I've heard, you know, various funny stories from um, patients of, you know, looking for humor um, throughout their cancer journey. Uh, maintaining that work-life balance is huge um, and is important. Um, to, to maintain that work-life balance. Um, being responsible, again, for your personal and emotional well-being. I think I said that um, earlier. And then, again, using this, adverse, this adversity for your personal growth. How can I grow through it? What, it, what is the teaching moments in it? Um, how, you know, how can I grow through it and be um, a better human for it when, and as, I, as I come through? And so, again, just laugh. You know, humor is good for the soul, maintaining that work-life balance and, and um, taking control of your personal and your emotional well-being in it all. Some, uh, some steps, so how do, we, how do we do this? Practice mindfulness. If we can, you know, really just practice mindfulness daily. I know it's sometimes we go through a day and the entire day is just a blur. You can go home and, you know, like, what even happened today? Was I present? Was I there, you know, in the moment? And so we can learn to practice mindfulness daily, just focus our attention on what we're thinking and what we're feeling in the present moment without even worrying about the why. You know, just try sitting in a, in a quiet place, closing your eyes, you know, paying attention to your breathing, your thoughts and your feelings. Even when it comes to when we're eating, just being present and enjoying that meal, savoring the flavors of, you know, what this meal tastes like today. We just do things today in such hurry that um, we're not living life in the present moment. And so I encourage you to just really try to practice mindfulness daily, to be in the present. Um, continue to stay focused on the here and now. Sometimes we can, you know, of course, when you're undergoing um, treatment, you know, you can look you know, where am I going to be six months from now or, you know, a year from now? And I always try to encourage my patients just for today. Okay, this is where, where we are and let's focus on the here and now and being mindful and being present on what it is for today. And so I encourage you to practice mindfulness daily. Um, practice gratitude, being grateful for the good things in your life. It really does help reduce stress. Um, if, I don't know if any of you have a, a, a gratitude journal. But that's a great place to start to just jot down two or you know two or three good things that happen to you every day, um, no matter how big or small, and you'll find that you'll end up with a beautiful collection of just some things that you're you're grateful for, and so and this helps us. You can reflect back on it, and it helps you. You know, it will help you develop resilience. You know, just practice um, jotting down some things that you're grateful for in your life, and see how that really will help reduce stress. Give thanks. I love this. I'm, I'm a letter writer, a card. Love to send cards. We're living in a world now where everything is, you know, text. You know, you may send somebody a birthday gift, your niece or nephew or somebody, and they'll text you a thank you. You know, we got to get back to you, the power of writing a letter. People love to receive, you know, if you write a letter to those who have supported you um, or just, just write a love letter in general. Now is the perfect time with us upon the holidays upon us. Instead of, you know, worrying about buying gifts, like really write somebody a love letter. You know the value of that. 
um, to that neighbor that has helped you helped you out, um, to, you know, the coworker or whomever. Just writing your thoughts is useful, even if you don't um, mail it. Don't even mail it a letter, but give thanks. And, and um, I encourage you to write letters to people that have supported you or, you know, a love letter just to a, to a friend. And there's great value in that. Look for strength. Resilient people tend to acknowledge strengths, not just weaknesses. Um, so even in the small things, you still may be feeling fatigued. If you're able to take that small walk, if you're able to accomplish something small, look at that as a strength as opposed to, to weakness. Despite your fatigue, you were able to go for a short walk. And, and look at that as, you know, so let's begin to focus on our strengths and not just our weaknesses. You know, sometimes we're hard on ourselves and can find, you know, weakness in all and everything. But resilient people tend to acknowledge the strengths and not, not just weaknesses. See the good. Look for ways that things and people benefit the world around us. Um, you know, always consider good intent. And look for, look for um, it's, the world is just, you know, we're inundated with bad. But let's take a moment and see the good in, in the world that in which we live in and the people and how they're benefiting um, the world around us. And so that, that helps us develop resilience as well when we're able to, to see the good. Research shows that developing resilience leads to less stress and anxiety and just a better quality of life um, during and after treatment. Less stress and more satisfaction can produce better physical health overall. And so um, this other quote that I love, I received this. A patient had sent me, um, we had, she had gone um, for bone marrow transplant. I received this card, and she said, I've taken pride in my resilience and positive outlook coupled with my belief in God. And I just thought that that quote was just so powerful that she's taken pride in her resilience. How many of us can say that we could take, you know, take pride in your resilience and your positive outlook? Um, and that just spoke volumes to me um, when I received that. And so I just, you know, uh, think about that. You know, take pride in your resilience and your positive outlook. And, um, and that will enable you to move forward, to press, to be able to press your way through um, whatever the stressful life situation that we, that we may be um, enduring. Resilient people are able to find, and, um, find the support and the help that they need without thinking that it's a weakness or a burden to others, which is very important. Um, you know, see if, if it's professional help that you need outside of family or outside of friends, absolutely. That's not a weakness. That um, resilient people find, find the support that they need without thinking that it's a burden to others. Um, reach out. You know, if it's the support group, if it's the professional help, um, you feel that you need that support, we got to find the support and the help that you need and not look at it as a weakness and certainly not look at it as a burden to others. There are resources um, here to help. And then just to remember that, you know, it's not about being happy all the time, um, but it's, a, it's about really just feeling your, whatever it is, if it's sadness, if it's fear, if it's anger or grief, but at the same time, again, being present and active within your own life you know, um, do something about about that. I mean, you're not going to, we're, none of us are going to feel happy all the time, but um, being present in that feeling and being active within it, within your own life, um, uh, that's resilient. And so I just wanted to take a moment here. Um, we know that uh, the, in the um, nature, nature has its seasons of life. Nature has its seasons, winter, spring, summer, and fall, and we too will experience some seasons of life. Um, I love the, uh, to everything there's a season and a time to every purpose under, under the sun, under the heaven. Um, so we may experience season, a winter season where we grief or sickness or loneliness, sadness, heartbreak. Um, a season of spring, hope, blissfulness, new opportunities, new beginnings, joy, enlightenment. Or we may be in a season of summer. We might experience some, a drought season or signs of growth or a peace. And then you can add other words into, into these seasons, um, season of fall, successes, achievements, or even some failures. Um, and I just wanted to just really just take a minute and ask you to reflect, what is your season? What season are you in? 
at this time. You know, you had to say, look at these and say, you know, am I in a winter season or season of spring? Um, is the season of summer or season of fall? Take a moment and reflect um, on what, what is your season now. And then just to remember that, and you know, if you are consider yourself in a, in a you know season of drought or sadness or grief, your current situation is not your final destination. Zig Ziglar quote that I love. Um, your current situation is not your final destination. And so, you know, I just want to encourage you to be prayerful and and thankful um, in in everything um, as you trudge your way through to resilience. Um, praise those that, you know, really, really um, believe, you know, just praise your way through is, is extremely helpful as well. Um, and just be patient. Be patient. Um, you know, life is a, what they say, a marathon, not a sprint. And so you have to, you know, kind of be patient and take these things. Um, take it slow and be patient in whatever circumstance that you're in. And um, find something to be passionate about as you move forward um, into the new year and you are coming out, um, you know, just what what can you see that you want to be passionate about um, to help, you know, live more um, a resilient life and more positive and, and, and more good. And remember that to share your story, that um, we go through things that aren't always, you know, just clearly not for us. I believe that a lot of the things that we experience is for a greater, you know, purpose, that your journey is not only for you, but um, your test is a testimony that can be a lifesaver for someone else. And so there's value in your story. There's value in you sharing um, what you have endured and what you're coming through. Um, and so that, that can really um, help someone else. There truly is value and sharing your story and helping someone else. And I feel like I've been talking super fast. Um, and I, I, this quote that I love um, by uh, a great American dancer, singer, actress, and civil rights activist, Lena Horne, it says, it's not the load that breaks you down, it's the way that you carry it. And I love that quote. And so I encourage you to carry your load with great Sorry, y'all. I accidentally. Go ahead. Okay. Um, are you able to hear the prior slide? Uh, you can repeat it. Okay. I'm sorry. Oh. And so right here, I just said that your journey is not only for you, but your test is a testimony that can be a lifesaver for someone else. And then I said this quote um, by Lena Horn. It says, "It's not the load that breaks you down." It's the way that you carry it. And so I say carry your load with grace, reminding yourself that you are stronger today because of yesterday's trials to tell your story that you too are resilient. Thank you.